Yep, excited to be a part of this regional and um, at this venue. You know, it's 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 at the top of college baseball's atmosphere and stadium and fan following and privileged to be a part of the regional. Hopefully the weather will cooperate, but uh, I've got a great group of guys, a resilient, tough group of guys that uh, I know they'll, they have the capabilities of winning a tournament, and, and our goal is to win game one and then you know, figure out how we can win this, this uh, very challenging regional with, with three really good opponents, but it's a pleasure to be here. First for Kalen, for Tyson, you know, uh, La Tech has a pretty interesting player. Uh, uh, he's, he's a, you know, he's, he's a, a closer, but he's also batting 307, Ethan Bates. Just wondering what, what your thoughts are on him, if you guys know much about him. Um, I'm not really familiar. With these, these guys, we haven't done a deep dive with uh, our opponent's players, but uh, I can certainly speak to his talents. I mean, it, it's... It's the top two-way player in the country, and um, you know, 15 homers. It's 350, 17 saves. They've they've gotten their money's worth out of that guy, right? So, you you don't see that very often in, in college baseball these days. But he's super talented, and um, he's lights out at the end of the game for him as well. I guess I know it was, it was disappointing last year. Probably felt like you were right on the bubble and deserved to go and did, didn't get in. This year, what was it like having to wait? Because you all had a good year, but, you know, maybe some projections had you in, some did. Well, for the players, what was it like? And that when you saw your name come up, what was that feeling like? <clears throat> I mean, the whole year, you know, Coach Hughes, he did a, a great job of, you know, scheduling our schedule the way he did. You know, it was really tough for us and to get our RPI up. Um, so, I mean, just because of that, we thought that that alone would – Help, like help us in the, in the postseason. So, um, but we heard our names called. It, it was exciting, uh, especially for a lot of us because I mean, for pretty much most of us, most of the team, it was it's our first regional. So I mean, we were just all all happy for each other, and we're just ready to, you know, play more baseball. Yeah, just adding on to that. I mean, we knew coming in the year that this team had regional expectations. I mean, like you said, the way we scheduled. Uh, we were eager and excited to uh, play that tough schedule, but I think it did a great job of uh, setting us up to be in this spot and be in this situation. And, you know, seeing our name called, it, it was an amazing feeling, but the uh, job's definitely not finished. Uh, just excited and eager to, to get out here and show what we can do this weekend. Right, so I know Coach just said y'all haven't done a super deep dive on Louisiana Tech, but I'm just curious. They have Pretty good offensive numbers just as a pitching staff. Kind of what's the excitement level going up uh, against a team that has you know such good offensive numbers? I mean, it's it's always exciting when uh, the competition's good. I think that's that's where we thrive when when we face guys that are really good with the bat. Uh, it just forces us to tighten up as a staff and you know execute pitches and uh, know our defense is behind us. So. I was reading a story. I can't remember. It might have been the KC Star or Wichita or one of those papers. But that, like last year, when you guys didn't get in and felt like you should have, you immediately like, like or very quickly called Tennessee and Clemson, maybe some other, some other teams to schedule. Is that if I got that right? And if so, kind of how did that, how did that, that happen? No, you, you got it right. Yeah. So it was, it was that uh, day after Memorial Day. I just started calling people. SEC schools and ACC schools. And, uh, I fought through a lot of no's, and, it, and it's late too, you know. So those schedules are done in advance, and if if somebody was really motivated to play us, they would have to readjust their schedule or move someone. Um, and and I don't I don't blame the SEC schools or you know the the top tier ACC schools for not not wanting to play Kansas State on midweek because. Their RPI is built into their conference. They're they're an unbelievable conference, and they're strong. And um, 
but Tennessee had an opening, and then uh, I couldn't I couldn't find a second game that week, and and they posted late. Clemson did posted late that they were looking for a game for Tuesday and Wednesday. There's a college baseball scheduling site that posts openings. So, but I hit the phones right away, and I, I added Northeastern University in Boston, and, and then. I tag teamed them with UConn, you know, so we could play two midweeks in the same regional country. Um, those schools were, were easier to work with because they're they love to get a Big 12 school come to the Northeast. That doesn't happen very often, and they were very eager to readjust their schedules to play us Tuesday, Wednesday. But it was done immediately after Selection Monday last year. You felt like that had the desired effect, obviously, because you're you're here, you know, a hundred percent and. And that, and that speaks to the, young, the to the bias of the RPI. There's a there's a geographical bias. You know, we're just we are so limited in Kansas where we are with our non-conference midweek opponents, and sometimes those opponents do not have a strong RPI. So do we play who's in our region, non-conference midweek, and and then get hit on Memorial Day Monday because our RPI and strength of schedule isn't up to specs? Or do we get in a plane, uh, cost thousands of dollars, get our kids out of class on, in the midweek just so we can manipulate the RPI numbers and the strength of schedule? And that's what we chose to do. And until the system changes, we'll continue to schedule that way. And this is uh, just case case just I think, the fifth regional appearance, which honestly kind of surprised me. And I know it's, it's the first one since 2013 when, when they knocked Arkansas out in Manhattan. Um, just, just how 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 big a deal is this for you, for your program? Well, it's, it's why it's why our whole staff came to Manhattan. It's why every kid in that dugout came to Manhattan is to get us on the on the national scene in, in baseball, and um, it, it's a big deal. We play in front of phenomenal community that um, that supports you no matter what, and they take a lot of pride in our team playing at the highest level. It's a big deal for our administration that invested in our program and has the same vision and same goals as, as our staff and our players have. So across the board, it, it's a huge deal. And um, you know, our next goal is just to sustain this and, and to be a, a consistent national player. And um, we've taken a step in the right direction, that's for sure. Coach, have you announced your starting pitcher for tomorrow? Yep, Owen Borma. Season has he had? How important has he been to you alls success this year? He, he's the rock of our staff. He's he's the our go-to guy and the guy we, we want pitching big games for us. And division great story. He's a Division three transfer. He came to our program last year and and uh, had a seamless transition from Division three baseball to Power five baseball. Um, no moments too big for him. He's uh, Crafty is kind of an insulting word, I would think, you know, because he has really good stuff. Um, but he's a big lefty with a, a deceptive delivery, and throws a ton of strikes, and like I said, he's, he's, he's the ultimate competitor. This may be a little bit of a random question, but I know you don't have any Arkansas natives on your roster this year, but you've had mm -hmm. several in recent years, you know, Jordan Wicks and guys like that. Just how important is the state of Arkansas maybe to your recruiting efforts and how valuable have those guys been over the years? Yeah, we, you know, Casey Ford, Jordan Wicks, Blake Adams, Connor McCullough. Um, these are all kids from Arkansas, and, and Arkansas is just, just a great baseball state. And you know, with our with with college baseball recruiting, it is no one's really pigeonholed to a region. You know, and we kind of recruit to our network, and but it's all over the place now, especially with the portal. But you do have to have an inside-out recruiting mentality. It has to start in your state. And it has to start in your region. So it's always important, you know, to to come in this region of the country, which is close to us, and 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 play well. But um, yeah, the, the the state of Arkansas is year after year turns those really really good baseball players. Yep. Yeah, thank you, guys. Is that right?